I'm Barry Johns, and this is Studio Talk, a channel where we talk about all things Project Studio related, anywhere from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And so today's uh, topic probably falls under intermediate, and that is, can I record drums with an eight-channel interface? So let's hit on a few topics first. Okay, so let's talk about what I typically do when I record drums. Uh, I typically, on that five-piece drum kit, would have um, one on each tom. So let's get those out of the way. So the two rack toms and the four toms, that's three. On the snare, I'm going to have two, one on the top snare, one on the bottom snare, in phase, of course. Um, and then after that, I'm going to use at least two on the kick drum. That's one on the beater, one on the outside shell, and probably add in a sub kick in there as well. Um, so you can kind of do the channel count as we're getting along here. Uh, I would have two on overheads. I would have one on my hi-hat, and I would use at least one room mic, if not potentially two, depending on the room. But I've got to check my face and everything there as well. So that's what I would typically do when I'm recording drums. So you can see by that math alone, using just a single eight-channel interface is not going to be sufficient to get that done without using other tools outside of that, okay? So let's frame that discussion like that right now. Now let's talk about the next thing you should consider. I'm sure many of you already realize there are virtual instruments out there like Superior Drummer made by Toontrack and then Steven Slade Drums. Those are probably the two most popular. There are certainly others out there and there's many other ways to do that, but those are two of the most popular and both are very, very powerful uh, virtual instruments for doing uh, drums in that situation. So um, that is also something to consider, but what you're going to lack in those situations is um, to have that the dynamic feel and the ear of a real drummer uh, simply cannot be replaced um, for the vast majority of people using those tools. Uh, I think they're fantastic for getting ideas down. I use them all the time for that. But if I have a song that I seriously want to really get to the end, it's something I see potential in, then I'm going to go back and re-record the drum parts with a live drummer. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. So now that you realize that's out there, there's also another tool that many of you probably already heard of, but if you haven't, uh, Stephen Slate also makes a very, very uh, cool tool um, called Trigger. And that's one of the tools that you can use to help you get to, or help you be able to record with fewer tracks. And all Trigger does is every time you hit that snare drum, as an example, it creates a waveform in your DAW that you're all used to seeing in your edit window. Well, Trigger will recognize that waveform. So let's say on that snare channel, you apply Trigger as a virtual instrument. Every time that waveform gets above a certain level that you set within Trigger, instead of using the sound of the recorded snare, you can replace it with a professionally recorded snare done in a professional studio with the best microphones, the best mic preamps uh, by top engineers who know how to do it, okay? So that, first of all, that type of, of tool is used by just about every record you hear to some degree. Whether or not it fully replaces the existing snare drum in this example or just adds another flavor to it, there's all kinds of creative ways to use that. So what Trigger can do for you is be able to get the feel of a live drummer, okay, but yet get the uh, the tonality, the sound of really high-end, professionally recorded drums. So in this situation, this is going to require using less microphones. So in this situation, you only need one microphone for the snare and only one for the kick. So now you've greatly diminished that. So you can say, well, Barry... Uh, well, why do I need any microphones alone if I have Trigger? Well, Trigger does drums. It doesn't do cymbals, and it doesn't do, um, well, really cymbals. It doesn't do oh, your, your, your ride, your crash, your hi-hat. It doesn't do that. Those all drum at vir virtual instruments have difficulty truly nailing that. They've gotten so much better, but it's still not quite as realistic as having live uh, live cymbals going on there because that really adds a lot of dynamics uh, to your overall sound of your drums. So if you're utilizing Trigger, you still want to be able to record your drum kit in that way. So you would mic it up. You would put one on the kick, one on the snare, one on each tom. So now we're up to five mics, right? And so now where I'm going to use the others is I'm going to put 
two mics on my overheads. And I'm probably going to live with just my overheads and, and let my overheads capture my snare. I'm sorry, my hi-hat. Um, because, uh, now this is a give or take. It depends on the musicians you're playing with, right? And if the drummer's playing to a click track, it gets so much easier. But typically that drummer's going to need either a bass player or a guitar player, somebody to play along with so they know where they're at in the song. It's usually a really good idea to record that particular uh, track uh, into your DAW. So that's going to take up one additional channel. So in this situation, you have one in the kick, one in the snare, one on each tom. So now we're up to five, two overheads getting you to seven and leaving one channel available for either a bass or a guitar that you're recording. And that is, that is a good way to get it done. Um, uh, you're not going to get your room mic in that situation, but that said, um, you can be able to create that within uh, Trigger, okay? You can add a room element into the sound of those drums. Uh, it's not going to be your room. So you say, well, Barry, why is a room so important? Well, let's talk about that next. Probably the most important thing to consider when recording drums is what space are you recording it in? To get the true feel of, of drums uh, in a song, the room is one of the most, if not the most important thing outside of the drummer themselves. Uh, probably one of the most important things that really affect the overall sound of those drums. If you take the room sound out, what are you going to have? Well, just think of old school um, uh, electronic drums. You just they they they're just there. They're lifeless. They don't they don't breathe. They don't have um, I guess depth to them. So the room is really important. So if you're just going out and recording this in a garage is a horrible space to record it in because you're going to get things bouncing off the walls like crazy. Or maybe you've got your rehearsal space. Well, depending on how that's treated, uh, you could have some challenges there. So the room comes into play a lot. And that's one of the reasons why whenever I go to record um, real drums, I'm going in a studio. Okay, I don't do them at home. I don't, I don't, do, I don't waste my time doing them at home. I don't have a space here in my house to properly capture drums. I go into the studio with them. So even more of a reason why, you know, you should consider using something like Trigger to enhance your ability until you can get to the point and then actually go in a real studio and actually record your drum tracks at that point for that song once you realize it has potential. So keep that in mind. You know, these are things that come into play. So next, we're going to talk about some of the other things that also lead you more towards considering using Trigger uh, if you're recording at home, and we'll talk about that next. Okay, I know I've given you a lot to consider so far, but there's another thing that it's important that you understand. The microphone preamps built into your average interface are sufficient for getting a drum recorded, but they're not super high quality. Um, that, that's the case for the vast majority of interfaces out there. Not all of them, uh, so there's some out there, certainly you get into the more high end, the more expensive ones, you're going to have a better quality mic preamp, they can do a much better job. But for your average one, they're not on the level that you're used to hearing. So typically on, let's just say uh, an API mic pre, which API is used heavily on recorded drums by a lot of folks, um, you know, API and name, but I would say API is, is probably more desired by most people when recording drums because it has more of an aggressive approach. Uh, and really takes dynamics very well. Uh, and so, you know, your, your average, you know, microphone preamp um, for an API is a thousand bucks, okay? So if you're recording uh, all of your drum heads, okay, I'm talking mainly your, your, your drums themselves. So we talked about having, you know, to do it right, two on the kick, two on the snare, one on each tom. So you're up to nine at that point. So you're beyond your eight channels. Um, you know, you're talking about $9,000, even if you were to get it done with five, even in the most basic sense, but there's no point in buying a nice preamp if you're going to use trigger. It defeats the purpose, right? So I think you've got to consider if you're really wanting professional sounding drums, it's going to require some much better and higher quality microphone preamps. Now, there's another component to this, you know, um, your snare mics, and your kick drum mics uh, are relatively inexperienced. Most people just use an SM57 on the top and the bottom. So for 
$125, $130 each, whatever they're going for these days, that covers your snare. Typically, a D12 or something like that on the beater is sufficient, but most people will put something like a U87 or something like that on the exterior of the kick. Now, you can, there's no rules, there's no wrong or right to this. I'm just telling you, usually it's a large diaphragm condenser on the outside of the kick. Uh, and then in your, your toms, your toms is where you don't want to use an SM57 unless you're going with trigger, okay? You can use any microphone there. It doesn't really matter uh, because all it's looking for is a waveform, and that's it. So in that situation, you can see where I'm going. You And, and your overheads and everything else, even if you go with something like uh, AKG 414s or something along the way for your overheads, you know, you're getting into a whole lot of money. So between your mic preamps and your microphones, you're going to be spending a lot of money if you're looking for professional quality recorded drums. And that's assuming you've got a room to do it in. So you can see where all this is kind of leading you back if you're at home. I strongly recommend that you start using something like Trigger. It's inexpensive and it's a great tool and it's used on so many recordings. I'm a strong component or proponent, I should say, because <laughs> I'm not a component because I can't play drums to save my life, but I'm a strong proponent of a live drummer. Somebody with that live feel that's got the ear for it, that can add a dimension to your song that you're probably not going to be able to, or certainly not going to be able to as well as a good drummer can. So to be able to get that, I think it's important that you still record your um, acoustic drums. Now you could say, Barry, why not use an electronic kit? Again, we're back to the cymbals. The cymbals are the problem, okay? And your cymbals are going to pick up every time you hit the head of that electronic kit, and it's not going to sound normal because you're going to hear it intermixed with your trigger sample. You with me? Okay? So that's why you want to have that, whereas if you get your live drum head being done, it's going to blend in nicely with your overheads, okay? Even though you're going to take a lot of that lower frequency out uh, for your overheads, but depending on the taste in the song. So um, so I strongly recommend that if you're going to do it, you do it with Trigger. If you do it with Trigger, you can do it with an 8-channel interface in the way I've described. Okay, so now we've talked about can you get it done with an 8-channel interface. Now let's keep into consideration that if you're asking this question and you're watching this video, most likely you don't have much experience doing this or you've tried it and you've, had str you've struggled with it, right? You know, somebody that's more advanced that's been doing this a lot can look at this and understand, well, wait, Barry, there's a lot more options that you didn't talk about that are not that expensive. So first and foremost, adding additional eight channels to your interface, and most interfaces have at least one set of A.IO on them, is very easy and can be done very inexpensively, okay? I do encourage you to learn the skill and the art of getting the mics and the placement and eventually build up your inventory of microphones. I would buy the microphones before I invested in the preamps, okay? But I would build up a good quality, and there's lots of advice out there on various options for great tom mics, uh, great um, overhead mics, room mics, and things like that. There's lots of great information out there that you can easily find with some reputable people out there on YouTube. And at some point, I'll probably do a video about that as well. But that's one of those things where there's so much, so many great options, it's hard to narrow you down to help you make a decision. Um, so, um, so, you know, you can add eight channels. You know, you can buy a simple eight at eight channel mic preamp. I think Focusrite makes one, Presonus makes one, if I remember correctly, you know, that you can buy for less than $500. A lot of people use the Audient ASP880 as an example that has very good mic preamps for its price range and can be connected up via ADAT. And of course, you can get in some really fantastic microphone preamps connected via ADAT uh, later on down the road, anywhere from an API lunchbox that goes in and out via ADAT to Neve makes some. Um, there, there's just a lot of manufacturers out there that make some really high quality microphone preamps that you can connect via ADAT. But if you're watching this, you're not likely in that position to be able to do that quite yet. And so when you, if you're not familiar with ADAT, ADAT is just another way to add eight channels. You can add 44.1 or 48. You can get up to eight channels of I.O. So just see an ADAT interface, although it's used by one single um, um, cable going back and forth, but it's just see it as another eight channels of your interface. So if you get an eight-channel interface, you add an eight-channel eight microphone. Now you have 16 in and eight out, okay? So you've got 16 coming in from the 
external ADAT microphone preamp going into your preamp, okay? Um, and so you can do it that way. And I want to encourage you because you want to develop that talent and that skill set for being able to do it so that when you are in a position down the road and you can record in a much better space and really get great sounding uh, drums, you already know how to do the fundamental basics of it. The other tools that you're going to add are going to add in there to uh, add, create uh, sonic improvement, not necessarily the quality of the recording to a degree. Well, that's not true. Of course, it's going to add to the quality of it, but um, but but there are going to be enhancements beyond that. So um, lastly, if you are going to do external preamps, here's where you've got to focus on. You really only should, at this stage of your journey, when you do decide to add external microphone preamps for recording drums, you want to have them on your kick and your snare. Those are the two drums that people focus on, and primarily the snare. If you can only do high-quality mic preamps for one drum, you want it to be your snare, okay? But if you can do the kick and the snare, that's the way to go because the others are just not continual dominant, um, you know, sounds that are happening in the song for most music, okay? Now, I understand that I've kind of gone, I've given you a lot to think about, it, especially if you don't have much experience with this. This may be a video you should probably re-watch over and over until you fully grasp it. If you're watching this and you fully grasp it, why are you watching? You already know how to do this stuff. But anyway, maybe I'm entertaining you. I don't know. Uh, and if I've forgotten something, leave it down below. This is one of those videos. There's so many things to cover um, because recording drums, when you're recording music in general, the drums are by far the hardest, okay? They're the most complicated um, and they require a great deal of detail and attention. Just super, super important. Um, whereas, you know, finding the, you know, an SM57 mic placement on the cone, uh, that's not that hard, okay? And you can do that pretty easily. But with phase and other things that are going on, um, it, it makes a difference. Bleed, all these things that come into play that once you start doing it, you'll get to it with. So the bottom line is, yes, you can do it with an eight-channel interface, but you're going to need to use something like Trigger to get the sounds for most music. Now, you can come out there and say, well, Barry, there's lots of great recordings with three mics on the drums. Yes, there are. But that's not most music, okay? And that's not the way most people are used to listening to it today. Can you do great work that way? Absolutely, of course you can. It's been proven time and time again. But that may be right for your song, but that's not likely to be right for every song for the vast majority of people, okay? There's always exceptions to everything. So I hope I've given you something to think about here. Um, and, 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 and so hopefully I've helped you. And you probably should go out and watch some videos on Trigger so you understand basically the concept of how that works if you're not familiar with it. But it is a great, great, great tool. There are other drum replacement apps out there or in virtual instruments, however you want to call them, plugins, whatever you want to call them. Um, but Trigger is probably the one that is the most well-used or well-known and most used by most people, okay? So that's why I recommend it. It's always done a great job for me, all right? So if you like the things I talk about, do me a favor, help me out, hit that subscribe button, help me continue to grow this channel so I can help more people. But until next time, have yourself a drumming, freaking drumming, kicking butt day. Go out and record Neil Pert. Then you'll have a headache. Well, then you can. He's passed. But man, what a drummer. What a drummer. Bye-bye.